Hello guys and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we uh, started doing our second investigation and we figured out that inside of one of the bears in Juan Carita's room was a camera that was pointed directly to where the murder took place, meaning that most likely someone out there has a tape showing what happened when the murder occurred. Anyways, in this episode, Edgeworth went off to look into who might have bought the stuffed bear that had the camera in it, which is weird because it's still in the background right there. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into this. It's past 9pm already, isn't it? I wonder... I wonder if Mr. Edgeworth has already found Mystic Maya. These things take time. I'd say probably not. The police are professionals, Pearls. They'll find her, so don't you worry. And if we can win it... And if we can win a not guilty verdict tomorrow, then everything will be okay. You're right. So the real person who killed Mr. Corito was... That assassin, Mr. Shelley the Killer, right? And the card Miss Andrews found at the crime scene seems to be proof of that. But if that's the case, then a new question comes to mind. Who was the one who hired the killer to begin with? Who is his client? You mean, who asked for the murder? That person didn't want to dirty their own hands in blood. But whoever this client is, they're still a killer. Who... who could have hired the assassin? Do you think it was Miss Andrews? I wonder. But if she was the client, then why go through the effort to stab the knife into the corpse herself? But if Miss Andrews wasn't the client... Then, no, it can't be. Matt Ungard himself? If Mr. Ungard really did hire the assassin, then he is not innocent at all. Far from it. You would be guilty of the crime. But it can't be Mr. Ungard, right? I mean, when we first talked with him... Mr. Ungard, I'd like to ask you one more question. Did you kill Mr. Juan Carita? Alright, so just so we're clear, dude, I didn't kill anyone, and that includes Juan Carita, okay? I didn't see any psyche locks at that time. Actually, that reminds me. Did you remember something, Mr. Nick? Yeah, something Miss Andrews said at the trial today. She said something interesting. Um, so what is this interesting thing? Oh, that's right, you didn't hear it, did you, Pearls? Juan had everything on the Jamma Ninja this year, and if he lost the Grand Prix, he was going to make sure Matt was going down with him. That's what he thought, anyway. It looked like somehow, Juan had his hands on a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. Mr. Engard's secret? Well, what is this secret? I don't know yet, but for now, let's think about it this way. Mr. Corito was going to reveal the secret. That means... Mr. Ungard had plenty of motive to have Mr. Corita silenced. Which means we have to meet with Mr. Ungard. There's no way around it now. Wow, it's really getting late, isn't it, Mr. Nick? Yeah, it's past 9pm already, but we still have some things to prepare for tomorrow's trial. There's still the matter of this secret Mr. Corita held about Mr. On Guard. In Miss Andrews' real intentions, these are two things I must know tonight. But aren't visiting hours over at the detention center? Hmm, I'm sure we'll think of something, Pearls. Don't you worry. Hey, wait! What is it, Whippersnapper? All I know is nothing that has anything to do with you is ever good. Just like now, I was handed this strange device for who knows what reason. And I was told to use it to search the whole hotel. That's the bug sweeper, isn't it? The one Gumshoe made. I don't know, and frankly, I don't care. But the request came from Edgypoo, so... Edgeworth? And he said... 
If you feel angry, direct your anger at that unsophisticated lawyer. So I'm going to feel free to direct all my anger towards you. Ugh. Gee, thanks a bundle, Edgeworth. What a pal you are. This is absolutely top secret. You'd better keep it to yourselves. I heard they found a spy camera hidden in one of the presents. Hmm, very interesting. I'm sure it was. You know, it was to catch Paul Wan in the middle of a scandalous meeting. Scandalous? What's that? It means... Well, you know, that gossip that's been going around about my dear Juan. Oh, you mean that thing about Miss Andrews. But I'm sure she must have had a reason for getting close to Mr. Corita. I'll let you in on a little secret, youngin. I know who planted that spy camera. It was that obnoxious puffy-haired photographer girl that... Spying on people by herself, as if I wouldn't want to see it for myself, too. Wow, the alien actually admitted her true int intentions for a change. I don't know what you're thinking exactly, but I can bet it's nothing good. But I didn't say anything. So you want to know about Juan and that manager, right? Actually, as I hear it, they were something of a refreshing pair, those two. Oh? I tell you, Juan really had welcomed that manager with open arms, I heard. That manager? Who are you talking about? You don't know? That manager woman Juan had. It's a shame she killed herself, though. Oh, you're talking about Miss Celeste Impax, Miss Andrews' mentor, right? Yes, yes, that's the one. That Celeste girl. She was supposed to get married, you know. M married? You mean to Mr. Corita? Ah, really, you young kids today don't know anything, do you? That girl Celeste killed herself three days after their marriage announcement. <laughs> three days after their marriage announcement? What in the... Why would Miss Impex want to kill herself? She was going to get married. Well, that's because she was thrown away, you see, by Juan. What? B but they were going to get married, right? They promised each other, right? They had held a grand an announcement session, but three days later, Juan suddenly canceled their marriage. Is that true? It was in the weekly magazines. B but why? Why did he do that? That was not in the magazines, unfortunately. I see. That night after Juan called off the wedding, that manager, Celeste, killed herself. How terrible. I wonder what happened between those two. So we're starting to see a connection there with Juan and Celeste about uh, them having a romantic relationship and her being thrown away. And we also have that note in seemingly Unguard's mansion that said, with love, Celeste. So it seems there really is something deeper going on here. On that night, there must have been at least a few hundred people here. Hmm. I guess the police are done with their questioning and investigating. It looks like things here in the lobby have finally calmed down. Let's go ahead and move over to the Criminal Affairs Department, since we last saw Gumshoe, he was trying to go uh, do a fruitless effort sort of thing where he's looking around in each individual uh, like store in this town or something like that. It feels sort of tense in here, doesn't it, Mr. Nick? Yeah, it does. I wonder if something happened. Uh, what voice did I do for you? I don't really have a set voice. Uh, you're Mr. Edgar's lawyer, right? Uh, yes, sir. Well, we finally found just the person we've been looking for. A real decisive witness. A uh, decisive witness? You mean for Mr. Edgar's case? We're talking- we're taking the witness's statement right now. Gotta hand it to Mr. Edgeworth. What's Edgeworth up to now? Uh, who is this witness? I think you know this person quite well, Mr. Lawyer. M mr Nick? Between the kidnapper's demand and now this can't see any way to win here. Oh, yeah. Mr. Edgeworth wanted me to tell you something. He did? Even though visiting hours are long over at the detention center, he wanted me to grant you special permission, so there you go. Eh? I've already called them, so they know. Go on. Go talk to your heart's content. Thank you very much. This is such good news, Mr. Nick. Go talk to your heart's content. Sounds like the police are pretty sure they have tomorrow's trial in the bag. 
Well, that's nice, at least, that Edgeworth is sort of helping us out. It's very interesting to see what he's doing throughout this case, because he's constantly going back bef back and forth between completely screwing us over and helping us do something that we wouldn't have been able to do without him. I'm sure they must have transferred Miss Andrews here by now. So that means that both Mr. Ungard and Miss Andrews are in this detention center. Now then, whose story do I want to hear? So you do actually get a choice between which uh, witness you want to talk to. And I think that the most important person to talk to right now is Matt on guard. And f because, you know, a lot of evidence is pointing to him. Let's see if we can get a, a straight story out of him. I hope you can get me off the hook tomorrow. I'm counting on you. I hope so too. Edgeworth just dropped a bombshell on me and said that Juan Corita was killed by an assassin. That assassin's client is this man, Matt Ungard. What's wrong? Mr. Ungard, there's something I must know with 100% certainty. You seem kind of different. You're totally not like your usual lawyer dude self. Um, about the press conference. You mean the one where Wad was going to dress up as the Nickel Samurai? Yeah, I heard a little more about it from Miss Andrews. It looked like somehow Juan had his hands on a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career if it had been revealed. Could you please fill me in on what this secret is? Please? I knew this was coming. Mr. Nick? D don't tell me. A psyche lock. You said a secret, right? But... You don't have any idea what it is, do you, dude? Five whole Psyche Locks. That is the most amount of Psyche Locks that a person can have, meaning they are desperately trying to hold on to this secret. Did you know about Mr. Corita and Miss Andrews' relationship? Well, it's all over the tabloids, dude. Ah, oh, but I don't know any of the details, if that's what you mean. Look, how many times do I have to tell you? I don't care what Juan did with his life. Miss Andrews. She had a purpose in mind when she started seeing Mr. Corita. Her mentor was Mr. Corita's manager. Miss Andrews was going to get Miss Celeste Impact's suicide note from him. Celeste! Does that jog any memories? Dude, I suddenly just got totally hungry. You up for a pizza? My treat. Um, Mr. Nick? What's a pizza? Is it like a kind of pea? Like green peas? Let's go eat one later, okay? The pizza actually does sound really good right now. Uh, I got cut off by the pizza dude at the shop. That's too bad. Well, how about we get our minds off this topic and talk about something else, okay? Mr. Ungard, are you connected to Miss Impact's suicide in some way? Okay, so we're kind of hitting a few roadblocks here. On guards not saying anything, uh, Old Bag revealed a little bit of stuff, uh, Edgeworth's off doing his own thing, and we seem like we're kind of screwed now. It doesn't look like Mr. Scruffy Detective is here. Well, he's out there with that camera asking out around at all the electronic stores. Then I'll make some salad for him for dinner. It looks like Pearls really appreciates what Gumshoe is doing for us. Um, Mr. Nick? Hmm, yes? Where's the lettuce? I don't think I've ever bought lettuce before. Hmm, I guess I have to give up on making a salad then. Guess the lack of lettuce is kind of a problem. Do you have any talk options, Pearls? Nope. Already went all through all of those last time. Uh... The only kind of thing that we're looking for now is that witness that was mentioned at the uh, Criminal Defa Affairs Department. So we'll walk around here, seeing if we can get into contact with them. Actually, my bad, we're supposed to go back to the Criminal Affairs Department, that's where you're gonna see the witness. Oh, Mr. Wright, please, you have to help me. Uh-oh. Mr. Powers! Why is it playing the Dr. Hottie music? What happened? Why are you here? Uh, I, uh, you see, I got roped into this somehow. What? 
and now I'm going to testify at tomorrow's trial. So the decisive witness is Mr. Powers? I was talking with a detective until a little while ago and I was on my way home. When all of a sudden, you there, you're under arrest, and I was brought back here. Oh. They said my face and whole self in general looked suspicious or something. Hmm. Well, I guess I can see how they thought you looked suspicious. Uh, I'm just a normal guy on an exercise show for kids. Is that a crime? So, about the testimony you're giving, what are you going to talk about? Oh, uh, I really don't know yet, but it sounds like I saw something pretty important from what they tell me. You saw something important? What was it? Oh, uh, well, the detective told me not to talk about it. You can't tell anyone, and especially not that lawyer, he said. Who do you think is that lawyer the detective was talking about? Can I take a wild guess and say it's me? Yeah, you got it. Mr. Nick, Mr. Kamaya and myself are your only two allies in this whole world, but it's alright. Ouch. I don't really have a lot of friends, do I? This is going to do a lot of damage to Matt, you know? Because he's got that refreshing like a spring breeze image going. But what is he really like? Well, let's see. Matt's always been kind of a player with women. He would never really turn a pretty face away, if you know what I mean. He'd always say, it's just a game to justify himself. What? H how horrible! That's unforgivable! Oh, t sorry, didn't mean to offend you. But you know, he said once that there's only one person in the world who wouldn't swoon over me. One person who wouldn't swoon over him. His manager, you know, Miss Adrian Andrews. Why is Mr. Power suddenly looking kind of energetic? Uh, you see, I'm actually a sucker for gossip. I mean, celebrities in their world have this dazzling sort of image, right? A dazzling sort of image? But aren't you a part of that dazzle, Mr. Powers? No, I'm more of a hairy, sweaty, smelly, brutish kind of guy, you see. But it's okay, really. I get to hear plenty of gossip ab about a lot of other stars around me as things happen. Well, that's true. Oh, hey, so did you hear about this yet? About Miss Andrews' mentor and her suicide? I mean, Miss Impacts. We heard something about how her wedding was cancelled. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I thought about it a little the other day, about that mysterious death. Hey, Mr. Wright, why don't you ask me about that? Go on, go ahead. Mr. Powers is so charged up, his skin is practically glowing with electricity. Hey, so have you heard this? Celeste left a suicide note. And they say that Juan went and hid it. We heard about that in court today. But there wasn't any actual proof that she had left a note. Well, this is what I think. I think that something bad was written on that note. Something bad for Juan, that is. Something bad for Mr. Corita? Why do you figure so? Well, before she died, Celeste talked with a few of her friends. And she said, it looks like I might, may have been caught by an insidious man. An insidious man? Did she mean Mr. Corita by that? Well, there's no one else that fits the bill, right? And that would be the reason enough for him to hide the suicide note. I see. Well, that's some good info. Thank you. Y you're welcome. Mr. Ungard and Miss Andrews. They're both at the detention center right now. There's still things I don't understand or know about, I'm sure. Well, I have to get to the two of them to tell me everything. So now what we're going to do is we're going to head back to the detention center. And we're going to talk a bit with Adrian. Oh, it's you. I'm sorry to be visiting at such a late hour. But there are a few questions I absolutely have to ask you tonight. Me? I thought your client was Matt. I'm sure Miss Andrews knows something. She can't be clueless about this secret Mr. Corita had on Mr. Engard. I'd like to ask you about Madame Guard, if you don't mind. Mr. Wright, you still don't know, do you? The real him, I mean. You seem to bear a lot of resentment towards Mr. Ungard. If that's the case, then why did you become his manager? And why did you become intimate with his rival? That has nothing to do with this case. Nothing. About Miss Celeste Impax. I'd, fin I'd finally put her death behind me. And now, thanks to you, it's all come back to the surface. I I'm sorry. 
Yes, I was shocked by her suicide. And it's true that when I heard the rumor that Juan was the one who had hidden her suicide note, I began to draw close to him. I wanted to get her suicide note back, and to burn it. You wanted to burn it? But why? I didn't want to spread. I didn't want it to spread like another piece of gossip. But I never held any murderous intent toward Juan. I would never do something so stupid. The suicide note, huh? I wonder what it said. Why did you try to frame Mr. Rengard? That's simple. Because he's the killer. That's why. Isn't it the duty of every good citizen to inform the police? B but there had to be another way. The police, are, the police are excellent at doing their job, so they'd figure it out, right? Yes, they're so good that they couldn't figure out the real truth behind Celeste's death. Miss Andrews. Well, um, I know you're not the type of person to do something without a reason. So please, tell me why you did what you did. Revenge. Huh? Did you say something just now? A psyche lock, huh? Don't you understand yet? You're not my lawyer. To be honest, you're more like my enemy. But... I'm sure I just heard Miss Andrews say... Revenge. Well, now that we've talked to both of the people in the detention center, and both of them are hiding stuff from us, I feel like this is a good place to end this off. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!